Hello everyone, today I'm so happy to introduce a great role model to me and so many other people, stand-up comedian Lee Ridley, otherwise known as the Lost Voice Guy. Lee won the top series of Britain's Got Talent in 2018. Since that time, he has gone on to compete in American's Got Talent. He's written a book and he has gone on tours with his stand-up comedy. I've been a fan of Lee Ridley since I saw him on Britain's Got Talent in 2018. So without further ado, thank you so much for speaking with me today, Lee. How are you? Hello, I'm very good, thanks. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. Could you tell us a little bit about your education and what assistive technology you use to support your access to the curriculum and communication at school? Well, I went to a special education or needs school for both my primary and secondary education. I think I got my first communication aid when I was about eight. Before that, I just used sign language. Obviously, this was a very limited way of communicating though. I think my first communication aid was called a touch talker and it was pretty massive. I also remember being reluctant to use it. I can't quite remember why. All I can remember is having to carry this suitcase around with me and then having to try to use it as well. I appreciated my speech therapist in the end. I think I only saw the benefits when I finally had a reason to use it. Such as in social situations, when I couldn't just rely on sign language. Thankfully, technology has moved on since then. Definitely technology has evolved massively. I can relate to you because I, when I first got my first piece of technology, it was at the big keyboard, big joystick, massive laptop, so I can definitely relate. What would you say to other children and young people who are learning to use AAC to communicate, especially those who are feeling a bit nervous or shy about using it? I would definitely tell them that it gets easier, the more that you use it. So I would advise them to use it as much as possible. My only other bit of advice would be to follow your dreams and do whatever you want to do in life. Even if you think it isn't possible, you should still give it a try because you've got nothing to lose. To be honest, I didn't really have any big dreams when I was growing up, I thought I had to make do with what I had in life because that's what everyone else was doing as well. I had a decent life and I thought I was happy with that. It was only recently that I realized that I wanted to get a lot more out of it. Even after realizing that, I never expected to achieve all that I have. So I'm just enjoying the ride and seeing where it takes me next. And if I can achieve all of this, then I'm pretty sure anyone else can as well. Well said, yeah, you definitely have achieved a, a lot, a lot. When, when did you realise you could make people laugh? I've always enjoyed making other people laugh, it's a great feeling. Plus if I didn't laugh, I'd most definitely cry. When I first started doing stand-up, I obviously didn't know what to expect or what people's reactions would be. I'd even say that I didn't even have a voice before I started doing comedy. Now it's different. I feel a lot more confident for a start. I feel that people actually want to listen to me for a change. 
and I feel that people soon forget about the disability and just treat me as another comic who messes around on stage for a living. It gives me a lot of reasons to be positive for a change. And when you audition for Britain's Got Talent, were you surprised by the positive reaction you received? Yes, I was very surprised by the reaction. The general public has been so supportive as well. I'm always getting stopped for selfies and having people congratulate me. And it has been excellent. I'm very grateful for all the kind words I have received. One of the best things to happen, since I won, is that people engage with me more than they would have in the past. For the first time, they seem comfortable talking to a disabled person. I'm used to being stared at for negative reasons, so it's nice to be stared at for positive reasons for a change. And you have gone on to write your own book called I'm Only In It For The Parking. What was the most f exciting thing you experienced when you, pu about when you published your own book? To be honest, I've always loved writing and I've always dreamed of writing a book. So writing was a passion of mine from a young age. I used to always write short stories when I was younger, and I think my love just grew from there really. I was lucky enough to have a great English teacher at school who always pushed me to do my best. So I would say that English was my favourite subject at school because I was made to work really hard at it and had a teacher who believed in my abilities. I also think that my love of writing has helped me as a comedian because it's made me a much better storyteller. So, when the opportunity to write this book came about, I jumped at the chance. It's always been an ambition of mine and I'm very proud that I've achieved it. <laughs> well, well, congratulations on achieving it. You must be, be so proud yourself and you should. Who is your who is your favourite comedian and why? Who inspired you? Ross Noble is someone that I admire greatly. He has been a massive help to me. Not only did he invite me to warm up for him at one of his Newcastle gigs, he has also been very helpful with advice and things like that. I know I can always go to him if I'm not sure about any aspect of my budding career and he'll be there to guide me. I just love how quick-witted and random he can be. Every show is different with him. Well, Lee, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure and you should be so proud of yourself. You have inspired me and so many other people. Thank you so much and bye for now, everyone.